Session number 931, interview with Sir Arthur Harris. You are attempting by your speech on Saturday night, what, to put the wartime record straight for Bomber Command? Well, I'm trying to get uh, a proper amount of credit awarded to my fellows who made such a tremendous contribution towards winning the war, a fact which has been acknowledged by the enemy and by the senior British Army commanders, but not otherwise. Normally, the bomber offensive is criticized as being... Uh, an expensive luxury uh, and as carrying out war against the civil population. Why do you think that there has been what amounts almost to a smear campaign against wartime bomber command? Well, I think it is a new uh, weapon altogether. Uh, people didn't like being bombed. And therefore, they didn't like bombers on principle. You know, uh, the fighter pilot is always the blue-eyed boy. Uh, the bomber drops things on people, and people don't like things being dropped on them. And the fighter shoots at the bomber who drops things. Therefore, he is popular, where the bomber is unpopular. It's as easy as that. What's the feeling amongst your comrades of wartime bomber command about the position in which they now find themselves being subjected to nasty smears in the press and in official histories of bomber command? Do they ever tell you or say what they think? Yes. Uh, one or two of them occasionally express themselves pretty bitterly in that uh, sense. But the majority of them just shrug their shoulders and uh, leave it at that. They did their best, and if people don't approve of it, well, that's that. What do you, Sir Arthur Harris, Marshal of the Royal Air Force, CNC of Wartime Bomber Command, say to those people that don't now particularly approve of what Bomber Command did during the war? How do you answer them? I mean, you yourself have not written a history, you've not written your account of the war, you're leaving that to your biographer until after your death. But isn't it a bit late to leave it to put the record straight? I don't think so. Uh, no, because uh, I think really the record is only just coming straight when we get uh, information such as come out in uh, Albert Spears' two books. Albert Speer's the munitions minister in the German Reich in the war. He's the minister of uh, um, uh, wartime uh, um, uh, weapon production for nearly the whole of the war in Germany. And he knows exactly, and better than anybody, what effect the bombing had on Germans. And he said in his own words, in the inscription of one of the books he gave me, and in the book itself, that the strategic bombing of Germany was the greatest loss battle of the war for Germany, greater than all their losses in their retreats from Russia and in the surrender of their armies at Stalingrad. Those are his actual words. Why do you think our British historians have, have got Bomber Command's role in the war wrong or misinterpreted it? I don't think they had anything to go on, really, because uh, except the American bombing survey, and uh, I think the official history was largely written before even the American bombing survey uh, had done its work. We, for some extraordinary reason, never sent in a, a, a survey party until uh, after the American survey was uh, finished. Uh, originally, when I asked where is our survey party, I was uh, astonished to discover that not only wasn't there one arranged, but there's no intention of arranging one. Uh, what was your wartime relationship with people like Tedder, Eisenhower, 
Montgomery. How did they regard Bomber Command and what you were doing? Eisenhower could never speak well enough of Bomber Command. He went out of his way to thank us and, uh, well, uh, just lately um, some secret archives released in America. Uh, there's some correspondence which took place between General Marshall, the head of the American armies, and Eisenhower, in which Eisenhower said that uh, he regarded the British bombers as one of the most effective parts of his entire organization. And uh, after the work which Bomber Command, and in the foul weather that existed for some days and nights, Bomber Command alone did to stop the German breakthrough in the Ardennes, Eisenhower commented on that with the words, God damn it, as you know, that's uh, one word in the American language, they have achieved the impossible. And that referred to the work that my boys had done. What about British Army commanders? Did they ever have uh, give you any kind of praise or give Bomber any kind Command, of reaction? Uh, Bomber Command had a whole nap handful of thank you messages from Montgomery. Uh, the final one being uh, when he asked us to knock out the defences on the other side of the Rhine when he was going to cross at Vessel. And the next morning, he sent me a message saying, thank you for your magnificent cooperation in the Battle of the Rhine. The bombing of Vessel last night was a masterpiece and was a major factor in enabling us to take our objectives before midnight. And actually, we put the army across there, uh, thanks to the bombing of the German uh, defences, with, I believe, the army had a total loss of 36 instead of the, well, perhaps thousands they could have expected in an operation of that description. Can I turn, Sir Arthur, to perhaps two of the most controversial raids that your boys made in the last war? Yeah. You know full well the ones I mean, Hamburg and Dresden. Could we take Hamburg first? Yes, well, Hamburg was, uh, of course, uh, next to Kiel, the major German uh, naval port from which they conducted their Battle of the Atlantic and uh, the major building site for their submarines. And the effect of the bombing of uh, Hamburg, amongst many other things, was that over 3,000 of the skilled workers from Hamburg cleared out of the place and never went back there again, quite apart from the casualties caused and the actual destruction in the yards themselves. Now, um, it's very really interesting to hear from Albert Speer again, in spite of the fact that uh, one's occasionally told that we didn't do a, good, a proper share in the Battle of the Atlantic because the Navy wanted to take all our Lancasters, use them out in the Atlantic, looking for needles in the haystack. And we said the place to get the submarines was where they were born or where they came from. And Speer confirms that we were right. In these words, he said, we would have kept to our promised output of submarines for Admiral Donuts if the bombers had not destroyed a third of them in the ports. But that was only the beginning because the wreckage in the ports was so bad that in the end uh, the Germans tried to prefabricate submarines inland so that they would only take a few days or weeks at most to be put together in the ports instead of being built there under the bombing for months on end. And with what results? Those prefabricated sections were too big to go by road or rail. They could only go by canal. And that was the reason the strategic bombers repeatedly bust up the two canals concerned, the Mittelland Canal and the Dortmund-Ems Canal. 
and the result was that the delivery of prefabricated sections to the ports fell from a maximum of 120 a month down to a mere handful and then to nothing. Can we turn now to Dresden? What, 1944-45 was it? The bombing of Dresden? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, of course, uh, people are apt to say, oh, poor Dresden, a lovely city, solely engaged in uh, producing beautiful little China shepherdesses with frilly skirts. But as a matter of fact, it was the last viable governing sector uh, 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 governing center of Germany and also it was virtually the last way through from north to south for German reserves moving in front of the Russian and our own army advances and moreover it was the way through to what the Americans always thought was a an alpine redoubt into which the Germans were reputed to be moving into underground caves, etc., vast stores of uh, munitions, super-secret uh, weapons, uh, the toughest of all their soldiers, so that they could carry on warfare there after the rest of Germany had collapsed and thereby create considerably addition, considerable additional uh, difficulties uh, for the Allied armies. Well, of course, in the outcome, the whole of that Alpine Redoubt turned out to be just purely in the imagination of the intelligence services. There was no such thing. But the Americans, and of course they led us to believe, as well, that this redoubt was really being prepared and that Dresden was about the last way through to it for the picked troops were supposed to be going there. <laughs> now, you hear a lot about the bombing of Dresden, but you ever hear any criticism about the destruction of Saint-Nazaire and Lorient? Two towns amongst many destroyed in France, Belgium. Uh, uh, in aid of the army and the navy and uh, those two places Saint-Nazaire and Lorient were destroyed to an extent where the German admiral in charge of that area said not so much as a cat remained alive to prowl the midnight ruins you never hear any criticism of that why? one can only conclude that the reason is that it was ordered by the navy and not by the air force are you suggesting or implying that there was uh, favoritism uh, towards the Navy and the Army, or perhaps no, there was no, jealousy no. on the part of the Army and no, the Navy? No, I'm just supplying that people don't like bombers. And uh, they think that, uh, that when civilians get killed by bombers, that it's something brand new. It's not new at all. No Navy ever had any strategy except war against the nation as a whole, blockade deprive the opposing nation of everything that made uh, continuation not only of war impossible, but the continuation of living impossible, deprive them of food as well as materials. Very successful in the first war. In the 1914-18 war, it was reputed to have killed about 800,000 Germans. You don't hear any criticism of that. How do you answer criticisms that you did bomb civilian populations and kill civilian populations rather than members of the armed forces. I mean, how do you what feel we now? Were, what we were doing, we weren't aiming particularly at the civilian population. We were aiming at the production of everything that made it possible for the German armies to continue the war. That was the whole idea of the bombing offensive. Uh, including, as I say, the destruction of the facilities for building submarines and uh, the armament industries throughout Germany and the people who worked in them. They're all active soldiers, to my mind. People who worked in the production of munitions must 
just expected to be treated as active soldiers. Otherwise, where do you draw the line? Did you ever have any qualms at all about sending your bombers out on raids on towns like Hamburg and Dresden and Leipzig and Munich? I had, I had qualms for my fellow, on behalf of my fellows, but not otherwise. Are you in... Are you in any way upset that your boys in Bomber Command during the war have to rely upon the enemy for any plaudits and congratulations they got for what they did in the war? Oh, very much so. I don't think they've, uh, in this country, received half the credit they deserve for their share in the victory. When do you think they will get that share of the credit from this country. I'm not the vaguest idea. None at all? None at all, no. Why do you think there is this sudden, uh, what's the word, almost, uh, doubt about bomber command? Why is it, do you think, you've, you've, you've almost had, what, a smear campaign against you in the press and in books? Well, uh, uh, I think it all arose after the so-called official history was published uh, that uh, people who always realize that you can sell a good smear where you can't sell a cold historical fact. I mean, as you know, uh, no newspaper could possibly survive on good news. Uh, it's the bad news that uh, brings in the money. And I think the same thing applied. They picked uh, out of context as often as not bits out of this, the uh, official history. And uh, I even remember headlines saying that the bomber offensive was an expensive failure. I remember reference to the fact that it took a vast amount more than its proper share of the national resources in order to provide and support the bombers. Actually, the share the bombers took was 7%. So I'm informed on pretty good authority. And uh, as in my opinion, they went 70% towards the final victory. I think the 7% they took out of the national resources was a pretty good bargain. The man that wrote that official history, Dr. Noble Franklin, now the director of the Imperial War Museum in London, uh, a wartime bomber command uh, flyer, he was a navigator, 36 missions. Yes, he did very well. What would and you say navigator. to him? What would you say to him now, should he be sitting opposite you? I would say on the facts revealed by Albert Speer and what subsequently became known that he himself would probably like to revise or to improve on and add to quite a bit of that uh, official history. Do you get angry with him about what he's written? Not in the least, no. After all, uh, when he wrote it, he was a junior officer, and there never was a junior officer who didn't know better than the commanders and commander-in-chief how the show should have been run. As I say, even a bugler knows better than the commander-in-chief, and I know that from personal experience, because I've had both those jobs in my time. You've been a bugler? I started as a bugler in 1914. In whose army? In the 1st Rhodesian Regiment in southwest Africa. And your commanding officer, who you advised and thought was not doing it correctly? He's known as Jan Christian Smuts, and one of the finest fellows who ever stepped this world. On a par, from the point of view of looking after the interests of his own country, on a par with Winston Churchill, and a particular friend of Winston's at that. You would, of course, have met Jan Smuts during the war, wouldn't you, when you were both uh, in, in senior command? Did you ever tell him that you thought that he was doing it wrongly when you were a bugler? Oh, I never met him in those days. I no, but when you met, met him, him later. Him. When you met him oh, later. Oh, we used to joke about it, uh, you know, that we were the two who really uh, captured German Southwest Africa. He was the boss and I was uh, the junior bugler. When do you think, Sir Arthur, when do you think the record will be put straight for Bomber Command? 
Isn't it about time somebody did it, officially? Yes, I think so, indeed. Uh, I personally think that uh, a lot more notice should be taken of Albert Spears' uh, book and uh, of the information that has subsequently come out. And uh, I only hope somebody will get down to putting the record absolutely straight. As far as I'm personally concerned, I, I couldn't care less, but I'm thinking not only of my lads who survive, but of the relatives, surviving relatives of those who gave their lives and some of whom must inevitably think that it was uh, to very little purpose. Some people to whom I've spoken uh, say that perhaps you have got a chip on your shoulder about it all. How do you answer that criticism, sir? A chip on her shoulder, what, personally? Yes. From what point of view? From the point of view of the people that you commanded during the war, Bomber Command, have not had the due recognition oh, that they Oh, very deserve. much so. I, I'm very upset that they've never had no due recognition of what they achieved. Uh, as I say, they have had it from the people who really matter. People like Eisenhower, Alan Brook, Montgomery on our side, Sepp Dietrich, uh, uh, Field Marshal Milt, and Albert Speer on the enemy side. And what those people didn't know about what was going on wouldn't be worth knowing, would it? When they were on the receiving end, they, they're, yeah. they're in a position to know. So I hope you've had a very pleasant evening here with your comrades from Bomber Command. I'm sure it's been uh, uh, down memory lane for you. It certainly has been. It certainly has been. And uh, I was very touched that uh, they should have gone to that vast amount of trouble all of them, other ranks or officers, to arrange it for me. Um, my medico, as I'm just recovering from pneumonia, rather threatened to excommunicate me if I didn't take things quietly for a month or so, but I told him I was going to that show if I went on a stretcher, and I would have done so.